is up my fellow spiritual weirdo fam out there and welcome back to the channel if you're new here my name is tawny michelle and welcome to this libra new moon video this video is basically a video that is going to go over what you can expect what your sign can expect and what we can all expect for the next week or two so do keep that in mind this is not just like a one day horoscope this is like for the next couple weeks so do keep that in mind also i wanted to say really quick as always make sure you watch the first part of this video where we really go into the chart for the libra new moon because that part is really really important and will give the general foundation for the rest of the horoscope so do keep that in mind also i just wanted to say really quickly that i am working on the october sign readings they're basically done i'm just having a lot of setbacks with this mercury retrograde so please bear with me i've had to redo some of them uh some of the readings so but they are coming um so because of that reason because i'm still editing the sign readings i'm not going to edit this video very much so please excuse any ums or pauses or whatever it's not going to be super edited because of that reason because i just don't have the time right now i'm trying to get this other big ass video up for you guys for the month of october so make sure to check out that video once it's up because it's been a bitch to work on <laughs> and you definitely want to know your horoscope for this month because it's a really big epping month okay so definitely want to be watching your horoscopes for this month so anyways let's go ahead and get into this libra new moon what it is what it could bring what themes we're going to see and all of that jazz so let's go okay so as you can see we have this lovely libra new moon happening here in the sign of libra so a new it's a new moon we have a new moon is when the moon and the sun get together in the same part of the sky which forms a new moon right the moon basically becomes invisible it is getting burnt up by the sun's light so to say now what's really really interesting about this particular new moon in libra is that it is conjunct the planet mars right and mars what is mars mars is an energy of assertion aggression conflict it likes to cut through things it likes to uh clear the path right it's the pioneer it is the uh it's masculine energy it wants to do it wants to take action it's the god of war and violence and conflict but it also is what gives us energy what gives us motivation what makes us want to go like think fire energy right that's mars and that's why mars rules aries right and so a new moon is about new beginnings it's something new it's some kind of new seeds being planted but this particular new moon is during mercury retrograde so whatever seeds that we're planting now are not necessarily going to be it's not going to be like a one and done thing right like we're going to come back to whatever seeds are being planted now whatever new things are coming up in our lives it's going to be a process it's not going to be like something that you can expect to see results in right away and something that like and that's the thing with mars there it may you may want that like you may want like to make some changes to you know do something to take some kind of action but in libra the sign of decision making the sign of consideration the sign of putting other people's opinions and desires first we can really find it difficult to take that action you know it can come from an indecisive place and so those are some things that we could see mercury is retrograde still also in the sign of libra so we are reflecting upon decisions that maybe we made too quickly or we are reflecting upon certain decisions that we make that are way too much on the other end of like considering other people right and so this is a new moon that's really showing us how to take leadership like how to take a leadership role but in a graceful and elegant manner right how can we do something that is maybe a little bit ballsy risky controversial uh that you know really how can we stand our ground but do it in a very do it in like a stylish way with class right like that's that's what libra is about right libra is an air sign ruled by venus it wants things to be graceful and elegant and like it wants things done in a 
a, a certain way, right? Like it wants things to appear smooth and classy and all of that. And so that's what Mars and Libra is really about, you know, like how can you do things that are maybe controversial or maybe taking some kind of risk, but in a elegant manner, in a way that is really graceful, that is harmonious, that actually ends up possibly bringing people together, right? And so with this new moon in Libra, we're really reflecting and looking at new ways to assert ourselves. Uh, and we're also really looking at different sides of situations. Libra is like the master at being the devil's advocate because it can look at all sides. It can really see things from a different point of view. And so whatever new things are coming up in your lives, you know, over this next two weeks are going to deal with something like that. You know, we are, Libra is also a sign of relationship. So this could be wanting to make changes in relationships, wanting to assert yourself differently when it comes to relationships, you know, possibly bringing up controversial things, but in a way that is elegant and graceful, yada, 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 right? You get the point now. But I would say that I would not be surprised if a lot of people were not going through breakups around this time, unfortunately, um, or were experiencing some rockiness in their relationships. You know, anything that we could see come up in news headlines like over these next few weeks and really that have already been coming up could definitely deal with relationships in some way, shape or form. Relationship scandals, things like this are definitely going to be being brought up over these next few weeks. Major themes with that. Also, legalities, making big, you know, judicial decisions, uh, diplomacy. Those kinds of things are also ruled by the sign of Libra, and we could be seeing those things come up over the next couple weeks. Now, also, during this new moon, it's going to be a pretty intense one because we have Venus at the 29th degree, um, well, almost at the 29th degree in this chart, uh, of Scorpio. And the 29th degree of any sign is intense, but especially Scorpio. <laughs> um, so with Venus here so close to the end of Scorpio, it's like about to cross over into the next sign, but not quite there. And so it's really packing that punch of like score built up Scorpio energy that like wants to be let out but it's not quite there, if that makes sense. And so this new moon is kind of setting the stage for the next couple of weeks. As I always say, it's like throwing a pebble in water and then the water ripples, right? This new moon is gonna ripple over the next few weeks, probably even after Mercury goes direct on the 18th, um, after the Aries full moon, whatever, you want to be really, really careful with the decisions that you're making right now because you're going to come back to them. Whatever you're starting right now, you're going to come back to. This is a better time for reflecting on these things rather than taking action, even though you're going to want to take action, right? Um, you can take action if you are doing it in a manner that is classy, right? That is, you know, considering yourself, but also possibly considering um, other people, you know, and this is really like self versus other. What's good for you versus what's good for other people? What's good for the individual Mars versus what's good for other people? How can you find like a very innovative way to do what's good for you, but to also like see that that may be good for others as well, right? This is really showing us like, okay, yeah, like, and, and this is in a lot of parts of the world right now, right? Like everyone, there's this kind of individual versus the collective thing, which I think is coming from the, uh, you know, Aquarian energy over here. But basically it can come from this Libra energy as well, because we've gotten to a point where we like truly think that, uh, if we are helping other people constantly, if we are constantly giving ourselves, our lives, our whatever, our power to other people, that that makes us somehow like a, a good person, a good member of society, yada, yada, yada. But why are you doing that, right? Why are you really doing that? Is it because you want to help other people? Is it because it makes you feel good or it makes you feel like you're a part of or because it makes you feel recognized either way if it's any of those reasons it's all still selfish reasons right and this is what libra is about looking at the other side that you're actually 
reflecting um, back to other people and that other people are reflecting back to you, right? It's looking at the side that you're not seeing or that you're not aware of or conscious of for whatever reason, right? So it's really showing you where in your relationships, where in your connections, are you thinking that you're, you know, being possibly more considerate or that you think that you're considering others? And, you know, really when the truth is, is that most of the time doing what's best for us is actually what's best for everybody else. Because here's the thing, when you are trying to please other people and only focus on what they want or what they need or what their desires or are or what you think is going to be good for them or what you think is not going to offend them or whatever when you are only focused on trying to please others in any way shape or form or trying not to offend others in any way shape or form trying to do what's best for others right you are simultaneously not being yourself <laughs> because you are painting a mask of who you are by saying oh look at me like i'm doing what's best for others while denying what's best for you therefore you're not even being yourself in the first place therefore you're not giving people a true version of who you really are right and this is a lesson i've had to learn throughout my life as well so if you're in the middle of this or you're recognizing this recently don't feel bad right like we all go through it in some form or another in in some way right but you're actually really taking from other people because you're not giving them the authentic you you're not giving them the whole truth to decide for themselves what would be best because they don't know the truth because you're masking it behind you know not speaking up or not saying your truth not doing things you know like you're repressing things about you to please them and so they don't even know who you really are or how you really feel right and so how can they accept you for you Right. And then after so long, you're repressing yourself and you're putting on this image, you're putting on this mask, you're putting on this, this way of acting. Right. When really, um, it, you know, they never really get to know you. And then you end up repressing all of this shit and eventually you get to a breaking point and you become miserable. Right. You become miserable and you get to a boil boiling point and you end up click. You know what I mean? I don't give a fuck anymore about keeping the peace, right? And then you end up hurting other people because they thought you were something else that whole entire time. And then when you snap and you're really you, they're like, what the hell? You know what I mean? And so really when you're not being you, you're actually taking from other people, right? Now, I know we're not always doing this consciously. I'm not saying you're an evil person if you do this or you're a bad person or anything like that. But I'm just saying like, really what it boils down to is that by if you're if you consciously know that you are not saying things or that you are you know trying to be something you're not to keep the peace or repressing parts of yourself to avoid conflict or to not offend or to not rock the boat then you are also simultaneously like denying a part of you you're also simultaneously separating yourself inside fragmenting yourself inside to where you're not actually giving other people the truth you're not actually giving other people the chance to say oh this is the real you at least now i can make a decision about you once i know the real you but i can't make a fair decision if i don't even know who you are because you're not or how you feel because you're not telling me right you're like you're acting like it's all cool you're acting like this, you're acting like that, you're saying this, you're saying that, but it's not what you really mean. And so this month, October, is a month to figure out how to say what you really mean. And you can do it, you know, I feel like a lot of people with Mars and Libra are saying, you know, don't rock the boat and this, that. No, you can rock the boat and you're gonna find a way to do it in an elegant and graceful manner. That's what this month is about. You're going to find a way to move forth, to go forward, to do what you got to do, to stand up for yourself, to stand up for the truth, to, you know, take action, to make some kind of change, to move on through 
by also doing it in a, a very elegant way, which ends up simultaneously working for other people and I promise you will see that if you do it if you take the risk of doing that and you say you know what yeah I'm gonna speak up I'm gonna say something because I'm not really feeling this and I've been like keeping it down for a really long time so I'm going to I'm gonna assert myself here um, you'd be surprised, you know, you will come across, you will do it in a very elegant way, as long as you're not coming at it from like a bunch of rage and, you know, emotion, if you're like really doing it in a very logical and classy, respectful way, um, you will end up seeing that somehow that ends up like being really good for other people, right? In whatever way, it may not appear like it at first. I'm not saying you're going to see that right away. Some people may. But you will start seeing something opening up because you did that, right? And that is you rebalancing your life. Libra is the relationship between self and other. It is that fine line, that balance. It is reflecting back in you what you're not doing in yourself or what you're not seeing in yourself. And so that's going to be really, really important. This new moon it's kind of intense, but also new moons in general can be very subtle at the same time. So you may not always notice the energy right away or what it's going to be about right away. But over the next couple of weeks, you will see how it builds into the Aries full moon, which I'm going to do a separate video on. So it's going to be a really interesting next couple of weeks. That Aries full moon is going to be really intense. I promise you that will be felt. I'm going to try to do uh, the video a little bit earlier that way because a lot of people will probably start feeling it like in the days leading up to it. So uh, make sure that you're subscribed and watch out for that if you want to know what's up with that because that's a big it's a big full moon. So anyways, um, some other things that we have going on over these next couple weeks is Venus is going to move into Sagittarius which it is then going to come across the south node, which means it's going to be bringing up a lot of karmic shit, a lot of karmic patterns, a lot of karmic cycles from the past. I mean, it's going to be a lot, right? And so you're going to want to be watching out for that. Uh, it could be bringing up people from the past, relationships from the past, exes, relationship issues from the past, things that need to be addressed. Also money issues, right? It could be bringing up financial uh, uh, issues. We could see stuff coming up regarding legal situations or uh, financial situations in the world or in the U.S. as well. Uh, because the U.S. has a Sag Ascendant, so uh, it definitely may bring up some financial losses or issues within the U.S., so watch out for that as well. Um, from like the 7th to maybe the 10th, because then on the 9th, we have the Mercury Kazemi, and that'll be right when Venus is conjunct the South Node. So Mercury and the Sun and Mars will be getting together on the 9th. That will be a major something is revealed around the 9th okay it could be the day before it may not be exactly on the 9th but right a couple days around that ninth period light bulb moment connecting dots revelation new information is revealed i really think there's going to be something revealed that it's like oh we did this too quickly or we rushed this it's going to be looking back at possibly some kind of quick or rushed decision that was made right and i have already made that prediction i talked about that in my september monthly uh, astrology video and i talked about it in my newest video my, my october uh astrology video if you have not seen that october astrology video go watch that a lot of people said they didn't get notified for it for some weird reason so i would really appreciate it if you could go check that out um so anyways but yeah something is announced revealed coming out some kind of new information something is exposed around that time or there could be a retractment or like a reversal um a decision to go back on something or to revisit something so watch out for that coming over the next few days so then on the 10th oh another big deal i forgot to mention this on this libra new moon we also have pluto moving direct and I don't know about you guys, but last year when Pluto moved direct, I mean, that was like felt, that was like a massive shift 
okay i like felt that shit like literally the day it was moving direct i was like damn i mean it was like intense like that night was like really bad i couldn't sleep it was just really intense so with pluto moving direct too there could be some intensity as well coming with this new moon um some major changes um moving but or with uh you know something being unearthed something along those lines uh with pluto moving direct in capricorn so it's going to be interesting um mercury retrograde still uh squaring pluto so there may be something kind of it's like pluto's been going back and like digging up stuff right and then boom it moves forward and mercury's squaring it mercury's now going back and mercury's like let me see what you came up with you know what i mean let me see what you dug up right and so watch out for that so then um we have saturn moving direct on the 10th okay and so <clears throat> these are all kind of outer planets so they're going to be moving they're going to be like stationing for a little bit so they're not going to be moving really quickly so we're not going to be feeling that forward momentum right away right but there could definitely be a shift right where there's some kind of shift that we feel especially if you're very kind of tapped into energies um you'll notice a shift around these times so but with saturn moving direct um that will be a shift in the sign of aquarius so wherever you have Aquarius in your chart. And then we have the Sun and Mars uh, taking turns squaring Pluto from the 13th until the 22nd. That is definitely going to be some intensity coming up around that time. Uh, that is definitely going to be revealing even more, digging up even more. The Sun squaring Pluto is like definitely shining a light on Pluto's darkness, on things that are in the dark, things that are corrupt. So definitely watch around that time. That could be like some kind of news coming out, some kind of information coming out, some kind of whistleblower, um, some kind of big announcement, possibly from like a leader or uh, something along those lines, like a leader uh being caught in some kind of corruption around that time period and i know it's already been happening like by the way can we just talk about all of the shit i'm getting right with this mercury retrograde all my predictions that are happening i can't believe can't believe it i mean i knew it was gonna happen but at the same time when it does happen you're like damn like i was right holy shit <laughs> um so anyways and there's still tons more you guys just wait for it it's coming uh, so we also will have Mars squaring Pluto. That will be conflict, uh, protest, coming together for some kind of common cause, social justice, possibly some legal situation going on. And remember, this is from the 13th to the 22nd. So yeah. Uh, and then on the 18th, we have the like Mercury and Jupiter moving direct. And I know I talked about all this in my uh, October astrology video, but I just wanted to go over it again for this video because this is the couple weeks that I'm moving over here. So when Mercury and Jupiter go direct, um, that is going to be, once again, some kind of shift, right? Uh, that is when we really, I think, possibly have some kind of new outlook on something are seeing something from a higher perspective there could be something legal going on around that time as well with jupiter involved and mercury and libra there could be some big decision being made around that time um but either way from that point forward we're going to be piecing together whatever has happened these last few weeks with mercury retrograde so and we will stop there that is everything i'm going to be really going over or that i wanted to go over for this libra new moon video i'm not going to go over all of it for each sign because i went over all of it for each sign in the october uh horoscopes but i am going to go over the libra new moon and maybe some of the other ones so um yeah let's go ahead and get into your signs horoscope you can find the timestamps down below Alrighty, so starting with Libra, this new moon is happening in your sign, okay? So if you're a Libra rising, this is probably going to resonate more for you. But new moon, new you, as I always say, this is really showing you and giving you some deep and intense possibly realizations of yourself and how you are possibly 
in certain situations where you need to assert yourself, right? Where you're in certain situations that you maybe need to make changes or take the lead or be in some kind of leadership role to speak your truth, to make certain changes regarding how you behave or how you come across or how you think about yourself are all really big things that are coming up. It's like something that you need to make a decision on or that you need to take action on. It's not gonna be perfect right now. Like I said, that Mercury is still retrograding in your sign, but you're really reflecting on your decisions and how you need to approach things in a different way and how you need to assert yourself more and talk about how you really feel, what's really going on, your own opinions, how you need to articulate yourself all of these things are going to be really, really big for this new moon happening in your sign conjunct Mars, okay? So um, on top of that, we also have uh, Pluto moving direct in your fourth house, which is definitely bringing some kind of big shift when it comes to home, family, your foundations, your past, something along those lines. Uh, possibly certain like power dynamics or power moves regarding your home and family could be coming up. And then Venus is moving into Sagittarius where it will conjunct the south node from the 7th to the 10th. And so you want to watch out around that time that, you know, there could be some past situations, past people, past relationships, past things coming up. This could also, you know, be reconnecting with someone from the past or maybe a past hobby or learning something new that you used to be interested in reconnecting with that in some way um so that it could be somewhat positive it could also be somewhat karmic so just keep that in mind for that time frame we also have the mercury kazemi uh around that same time on the 9th happening in your first house as well so that could be a really big realization around that time um uh, or something like a mind shift uh, a mind change around that time seeing something that you maybe didn't see before or changing your point of view on something or making some kind of decision or making some kind of announcement speaking up about something uh could be it as well so uh, the other couple of things I want to talk about here are the Sun and Mars uh, square to Pluto from the 13th to the 22nd um, happening once again in your first house and your fourth house of home and family and living situations, dynamics, all of that. So there could be some power struggles going on around that time frame that you want to watch out for. Um, there could be something going on with family or some kind of control issues or some kind of changes or something that gets dug up, something that uh, gets revealed around that time frame uh, or some kind of conflict. So just watch out for those themes around that time frame. So that is what I'm getting for you, Libra. Definitely let me know down below if that ends up resonating for you. Moving on to Scorpio. So for Scorpio, you could notice with this Libra new moon and over these next couple weeks that there is a lot coming to light in terms of relationships and your past. Uh, and also possibly certain self-sabotaging behaviors or certain subconscious behaviors, certain things going on behind the scenes with relationships or people in your life, connections in your life that you're really reflecting on or certain past cycles to do with relationships and connections in your life. Uh, so you really wanna watch out for that around this time and how you may be con contributing to these factors in some way or participating in these factors in some way that is actually causing you to possibly lose out rather than gain from these connections or from these relationships. So you just want to keep that in mind around that time. Now, other than that, you could also notice that there are certain connections maybe in your immediate environment or in your community, in your neighborhood, in your like friend group, uh, certain relatives, family members, uh, siblings, things coming up with them or those uh, themes around the next couple weeks as well, making changes in regarding those themes or um, certain power dynamics or certain things that are kind of beneath the surface that are being revealed to you, certain truths coming out or that are being unearthed. Um, 
you know, there could be something going on in your local environment or in your town, in your city, something like that as well around this time uh, to do with power struggles or power dynamics, something like that. So you do want to watch out for those themes around this time too. Some other things you could notice are transportation, um, because the third house does rule transportation, possibly something with learning uh, or things that you do on like a day-to-day -day basis or places that you frequent on like a day-to-day -day basis. So anyways, you're, you're kind of seeing certain things that are controversial here that need to be addressed. Certain uh, behaviors, patterns, cycles that may need to be addressed and that may need to be dealt with. So that is what I'm seeing for you, Scorpio. But moving on to Sag. So for Sag, this new moon is happening in your 11th house of friends, your social life, you know, the people in your life that are like-minded people. It could be certain groups of people on Facebook. It could be uh, a certain class that you belong to that, you know, where you guys are all doing the same thing or where you think a similar way. It could be certain relationships and connections in your life, certain friends in your life, certain, um, you know, networks in your life, right? Uh, so there could be something coming up with that around this time. Maybe you're wanting to debate or maybe you're seeing other sides. Maybe you're bringing people together or harmonizing people in some way or trying to. Maybe you're trying to keep the peace in a certain friend situation or social situation. But there could be over these next couple of weeks, uh, something kind of exposed in your friend life or in your friend group or in your cert these certain groups or cliques that you're a part of. Um, there could be something kind of dug up or it could be possibly like you may need to be possibly making changes in some way. Like maybe uh, you're being taken advantage of or maybe your time, money, effort, resources, uh, priorities are getting kind of changed because of this situation. Maybe your values or your integrity uh, is not aligning with this situation. And so you need to reflect on it or make some changes there. So those are some things that you could notice coming up these uh, next couple weeks with that. You could also have some major realizations or, you know, uh, some big conversations with some of these people that come up or some new information that's revealed. Um, so those are the things that you want to watch out for, Sagittarius. Moving on to Capricorn, this Libra new moon is happening in your 10th house sector of career, your goals, your future, your legacy, the things that you want to do in the world, your public life, where you're headed, you know, you're really thinking long term here. You're really thinking big picture, future focused stuff, right? Like, what do I want? What do I want in terms of connections and relations in my life? What do I want in terms of fairness and equality in the world? Or what do I want to be a part of that's going to bring that in in some way? Um, so there could be some stuff going on here with like authority figures or conflicts going on with authority figures, conflicts going on with the bosses, career, etc. that you're trying to sort out or being involved in some kind of peacemaking or finding common ground to do with those things. Maybe you could also be having to take the lead in a certain situation or you could be having to, uh, you know, assert yourself in a certain situation. Uh, or reflect on your decisions or your long-term goals in some way. And this could be really challenging your own personal power, your own sense of control, your own sense of integrity deep down, right? Like this could really be over these next couple of weeks, it could really force you to either change something about yourself and what's important to you or to continue to try to do for others. And so that's some kind of decision that you may have to make over these next couple of weeks, Capricorn. Now, on top of that, um, we also, you also may be going through some kind of really big uh, realization around this time, or you may be dealing with somebody um, in career or in like the public eye that you are having some kind of power struggle with or the, some kind of disagreement with that you're trying to sort out. So those are some other things that you could notice around this time, but um, those are a lot of the big themes that I see coming for you over these next couple weeks. So moving on to Aquarius. So for Aquarius, this new moon is happening in your ninth house of your belief systems, 
your worldviews, politics, legalities, uh, travel, philosophy, spirituality, religion. And so there could be a lot of stuff coming up with your belief systems. You could be having debates with people or wanting to be having like intellectual conversations with people or wanting to share information with other people, wanting to show people other sides of something, other things that they may not be seeing or that may be hidden from them. You're wanting to possibly even like expose certain things to people um, around this time. Um, and I think you're trying to find a way to do it that, you know, is going to be graceful, that's going to be elegant, that's going to have class, right? And so that could be the struggle here. Um, this could also be revealing a lot about your own subconscious belief systems, traumas, pain, um, patterns, cycles. So you want to kind of look into that as well, because this new moon and over the next couple weeks could be like kind of showing you where you may have certain subconscious things going on that need to be healed or addressed. This could be a very kind of catharsis time um, that could change your outlook on things, that could change your belief systems, Aquarius. So that's kind of what I'm seeing for you over these next couple weeks. For Pisces, this new moon is happening in your eighth house of other people's money, money owed to you, money that you owe to others, uh, fears, phobias, your partners, resources, or money. So you could see themes like that coming up with this new moon. You're trying to balance something out, trying to learn how to address something. Um, your partner could be going through changes when it comes to their finances, their money, or somebody in your life could be. Uh, you could be trying to make decisions regarding finances. You could be trying to find the correct path to take regarding certain financial issues. Um, around this time. Now, this could somehow, though, kind of change your vision for the future or what it is that you want out of the future or certain people, clicks, dynamics, or connections that you're involved with, organizations, something along those lines. Um, there could be some kind of challenge there where you're having to uh, you know, make certain decisions that maybe affect others in some way for some of you, it may not be all of you. Um, so, so those are definitely some themes that you could see around this time. <clears throat> and you may also start noticing um, certain things coming up with your career and uh, things that you're interested in regarding career, regarding your future, and things like that around uh, the next couple weeks. But this is really learning how to assert yourself in something financially or even your partner learning how to assert themselves in something financially. So that is what I'm seeing uh, for you, Pisces. Those are some things you could see come up over the next couple of weeks with this Libra new moon. So moving on to Aries, this Libra new moon is happening in your seventh house of relationships, which really, I mean, it's all about relationships. I mean, it's, I don't know how else to put it other than that. So um, yeah, so this is a time where you are really, relationships are like a big deal right now. Like you are uh, figuring out, you could be going through certain decisions, um, figuring out how to consider your partner a little bit more or where the line is between self and other certain boundaries, making certain changes regarding relationships. There could be relationship stuff coming up from the past, relationship dynamics, you know, consideration in relationships. There could be a lot going on with your partner around this time. Your partner could be going through something. So this is all really, really big around this time. Um, your partner could be you know, making some changes or figuring out how to assert themselves in a situation, or you could be figuring out how to assert yourself uh, when it comes to your partner or certain connections in your life. It may not, it may not just be like a partner. It could also be a business partner, a really close friend, something like that as well. But um, if you're in a relationship, I'm sure this will likely have to do with your partner or your marriage partner if you're married. The problem is, is that there could this could be challenging in terms of future, career, like legacy, what you're trying to build with your partner, um, like something could be changing there, you know, like, or something to do with career as well. Your partner could be going through uh, some changes with their career, or you could be feeling uh, kind of a push and pull between your career, your future, what could be your vision for the future versus your partner in some way. And that could be 
somewhat intense over these next couple weeks. You could be feeling that kind of intensely or there could be some kind of conflict of interest there. So that is basically what I'm seeing for you, Aries, over these next couple weeks. It does look like, though, with Venus moving into Sag in your ninth house, you will be possibly learning new things, feeling pretty optimistic, um, taking an interest in new things. So I think that will be uh, very cool for you, Aries. So moving on to Taurus. So for Taurus, this new moon in Libra is happening in your sixth house of health, uh, work, you know, basically things that suck. <laughs> um, not a very fun house. Um, I will say that. And I comes from experience. My North Node is in the sixth house. So not a fun place, but this is really bringing up shit that needs to be balanced out in your health and work. You know what I mean? Where are these things affecting you to where you can't get shit done or you can't maintain things like you could be, you know, like it, it's really showing you things that need to be addressed or fixed in order for you to maintain the life that you want to have and do the things you want to do. And so it could be bringing up issues with work, coworkers, uh, health, health issues, things like that, things that really need to be balanced out. So you could be really reflecting on how you're going about addressing these issues. Uh, and then we also have that square to Pluto happening, um, you know, later on in these next two weeks in your ninth house. So this could be really changing your outlook, your belief systems, um, your worldviews that could be affecting your health and your work in some way. Um, where are your health and your work possibly affecting your belief systems, your worldviews, your political views? You know, there could be some kind of clash here. Where do you need to do what's right for you versus do what's right for others, right? Where is that line? Um, you know, this Libra New Moon is like showing you how you can do things for yourself that, you know, may actually still be good for others, right? Or how you can take a stand in something or, um, you know, do something for yourself in your own health, your own job, your own work. But also somehow that may actually be what's best for others. You know what I mean? Um, by doing you and sticking to what you truly value and what's truly important to you and your integrity, somehow that ends up being okay. Right. And so I think that that's what you're kind of working with right now. Um, you're, you're kind of, it may seem at first like, oh my gosh, I need to make this really big decision. Um, I either need to change my outlook or my beliefs, or I need to somehow make this decision regarding um, my health, wellness, work, etc. Um, and, you know, there may be a middle ground in that, right? It may not be as dire as you think it is. It may seem like that over these next couple weeks at first, but it may not be. And so just keep that in mind. So moving on to Gemini. So for Gemini, this new moon is happening in your fifth house of love, romance, joy, children, and creation. And so these themes could be being brought up around this time. Um, you know, this could be a time where you are wanting to have more fun, wanting to find more pleasure, wanting to socialize more, wanting to maybe connect more, you know, wanting to mingle. Um, you know, there could be some things going on. Um, you could be like working on the relationship with your children, if you have children, things like that. What I will say here is though, as we kind of get to the end of this next two week period, you may notice some intense themes or conflicts coming up in these areas regarding finances, money that's owed or owed to you, certain fears, um, certain things that are out of your control that may bring up some changes. Okay, so what I would say here is to just kind of be careful, like it's okay to have fun, but you want to make sure you're being balanced about it, that you're not just like, you know, taking things to an extreme in some way. So that's kind of what I'm getting from that, um, or that you're not doing shady things uh, in relationships. <laughs> uh, I would say that too, that could be the case for some of you, because something is kind of getting dug up here um, next week. And so that's why I'm saying that, um, and it's in your eighth house. And so that could be, uh, you know, some things that are a little bit out of your control or that are being revealed. So just kind of keep that in mind. So 
that's what I'm getting for Gemini. Moving on to Cancer. This Libra new moon is in your fourth house of home, family, your uh, living situation, your roots, your foundation, your childhood. And so this new moon could definitely be bringing up these themes over these next couple weeks. You could really be reflecting, feeling nostalgic. Uh, this could also be bringing up your relationship, your marriage, uh, since it's in Libra and it's in the fourth house. And also certain power dynamics within your relationship, within your marriage, within your family, uh, within your family's relationships, right? Like this could really be bringing up certain possibly hidden patterns or subconscious patterns, subconscious cycles, subconscious power struggles, and possibly control dynamics within family and relationships. So you do want to watch out for that, Cancer, over these next couple weeks. Um, you're really going to be reflecting on these things and you may be in a relationship or in a certain situation with a family member or somebody in your life where uh, there are certain power dynamics or control issues kind of being exposed or something kind of being exposed. So um, yeah, that's kind of what I'm seeing here for you, Cancer, with this Libra new moon. Moving on to Leo, for Leo, this Libra new moon is happening in your third house of uh, communication, uh, friends, your community, kind of like your close-knit social circle, like the few people that you, you know, kind of mess with, like in your immediate environment, right? Um, that maybe don't live very far from you, that you talk to a lot or often, and the places that you frequent and the things that you do on a day-to-day -day basis. So this is really bringing up kind of like your your inner social life and your um, kind of environment, right? And the places that you go, uh, transportation, uh, short travels, siblings, uh, you know, relatives, this could be definitely a time where you're needing to take the lead or asserting yourself in these situations in some way, or that you're making decisions regarding these situations in some way, that you are doing something or reflecting on something to do with certain close relationships in your life and uh, your close social circle, you know? So yeah, that definitely you could be noticing those themes coming up over these next couple weeks. And then also when we start getting Mars and the sun squaring Pluto next week, that is definitely gonna be a time where there could be some conflict or some struggles regarding maintaining responsibilities, maintaining work, um, maintaining things that <clears throat> need to be done that maybe you're neglecting by these social situations, right? Like maybe someone needs your help or a friend or you're, you know, a friend wants you to do something, but maybe it ends up causing um, you to neglect some responsibility or there could also be, you know, health and work stuff coming up in terms of friends, in terms of your community, in terms of uh, where you live, your environment, um, you know, something along those lines. So watch out for those themes over these next couple weeks. Uh, I know it's interesting for me, like uh, my, uh, <laughs> my, like one of my good friends actually um, just went through a surgery. And so I feel like this would be very spot on that, but something like that. But um, yeah, so just watch out. There could be some stuff being exposed or brought to light as well regarding uh, certain people in your life or certain social situations, your community or environment, etc. So last but not least, Virgo. So for Virgo, this new moon is happening in your second house of priorities, money, resources, uh, possessions, things that you need that help support you and your lifestyle. Uh, so this could be a time of possibly reevaluating or looking at resources, uh, some things coming up with resources, priority finances, um, regarding other people in your life or regarding relationships in some way, uh, because you have Libra there. And so there's definitely, um, I think that you're trying to possibly make a decision on possible resources, priorities, finances, possibly making a big purchase or uh, what you want to do to achieve 
more security or stability for you and maybe your partner or you and other people. Um, something along those lines. There's there's definitely co something coming up here, mixing in kind of your connections, your relationships, your close relationships versus resources and finances and all of that, stability, security. There could be some issues though in terms of um, children with that in some way uh, or like um, your child needs some kind of money for something or there could be something going on in terms of uh, you know taking something to the extreme in terms of work or play that ends up costing you over like the next couple weeks in some way so you do want to be careful of that that you don't take something to an extreme um there could also be some kind of like confrontation here between uh children relationship resources uh what it is that interests you what it is that you want to do versus resources and income um so just keep that in mind also a relationship or somebody that you're seeing there could be some kind of conflict in there as well over these next couple weeks so um just keep that in mind but there could also be you know squares are not always like doom and gloom there could also be an extreme motivation to uh make a big purchase towards something that you're interested in that you're really kind of saving up for or that you're really researching over these next couple weeks i wouldn't say these next couple weeks are the weeks to do it i would say these next couple of weeks are the weeks to reflect on it and to figure out if that's really what you want to do to make your decision so that's what i'm seeing for you virgo um and that is all for the signs in this video thank you guys so so much for watching hopefully your readings uh ends up resonating end up resonating uh definitely comment down below and let me know it really helps me to hear your guys's feedback i really appreciate it and thank you guys so so much for watching this video i will see you guys in my other videos bye